Welcome back everyone to some more World of Tanks and this replay we have Gonzalo Ice-T in the tier 7-ish I guess um, special reward vehicle the Super Hellcat which is pretty much like a Hellcat that got a little bit of DPM increase that got a bit more pen um, and then just got thrown into tier 7 it's, it's just I'd say this vehicle is more like a tier six and a half, maybe. Uh, d d vehicle, it's it's definitely not an impressive uh, tier seven a tank destroyer, but uh, but um, Gonzalo Ice Steve's going to show you exactly how dangerous this vehicle can be in uh, the right match up uh, against some tier five, tier six, and a bit of tier seven vehicles. So. What is special right about the Super Hellcat? Well, it's fast, and uh, I guess we're enjoying the little, the little brother, the regular Hellcat, over towards our right over here. Um, but this vehicle is extremely fast, like 72 kilometers an hour top speed. It has great uh, power to weight ratio of 20, if I'm not mistaken. Horsepower per ton, which is amazing for a tank destroyer. Uh, it has decent camo as well, 20 base uh, camo rating, which is definitely not bad. But the gun, I mean, it has pretty bad DPM. It has 167 millimeters of standard pen from second, yes, which are kind of uh, underwhelming at tier 7. Gold runs 210, once again, definitely not something you, you'd like to have. I mean, you will struggle every time you see tier 8 vehicles and some tier 7 heavies as well. So you do need to find yourself in a very nice matchup if you want this vehicle to work. But overall, fast, and that's pretty much it. That's that's what this vehicle has. It doesn't have good fear range with 370 base. Um, it doesn't have the best of guns, like we said. Uh, pretty bad DPM, not good pen. Shell velocity is pretty bad as well, with 853 on standard rounds. 1,021 with the premium rounds. Um, and on the HE rounds, you have only 823, was it? Yes, it was. You know, they're not the best of vehicles, but I mean, it does make sense when you get this vehicle for free, right? Just by playing this game for like four, five years, if I'm not mistaken. And you can get this vehicle for free every year at the end of November. They have the uh, well deserved reward by Wargaming, which rewards players for how long they've been playing the game. Uh, the more time you played, like the more time your account has been uh, around, right? the more stuff you will get so if you if you're in if you've been inside the game for four five ish years then you will get a bunch of vehicles with the super hellcat included among them um there we go catching that junior the tier six new japanese heavy tank managing to go through that lower plate so when you when you consider the fact that this vehicle is just gonna you know, get it for free just by having an account that is a bit old i guess it does make sense that this vehicle is not going to be the best of vehicles that would get one to the crusader over here like i said when you get to a good matchup you can do some stuff uh, um so yeah so far so good 1000 damage a kill you know pretty chill game so far in the first three and a half minutes but this this game is going to become interesting to say the least to say the least is going to be interesting uh, later in this replay okay unfortunately Gonzalo's team is kind of crumbling everywhere by 60 down by 2362 hp but there we go the same is pushing forward putting one into the side of that italian tank destroy can we get them with the one shot over here just need an average roll there we go we can't have the one shot curse here no 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 one shot curses for us this time but there we go, second kill, 1,600 damage. Can we go for the Super Hellcat and finish off the counterpart on the enemy team? It just falls back in time. But there we go. Spotted towards the north is a Type 58. It is a Yang Panther, which is a one-shot. You should always, always focus down those high tier. And there we go into the backside of the Yang Panther, not actually going through, ricocheting off the backside of the Yang Panther to slowly, and that means that Gonzalo is able to shut down this tier 7 German tank destroyer, which can actually do a lot of damage uh, if you just leave it alone. So that was definitely, definitely a crucial hit to make over here. But now, 6-4.
in favor of the enemy team. Still down by 2,000 HP. What is Gonzalo going to do? Uh, Trying to catch this time 58 in the back of the turret. There we go. And that's a one shot. Just put one more shell in. Just one more shell in. There we go. Trying to run away, but Gonzalo catches him in the back of the turret. 169. Nice damage over here. That was really surprising. I thought that one was actually going to go far away. Like one into the P43, tracking that tier 5 uh, medium tank. Uh, but yeah, the north crumbling. The south holding on. You know, thanks to Gonzalo getting the kills and stuff, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good over here. Even with the artillery shutting down the G Ro, the pretty dangerous tier 6 Japanese tank destroyer. Um, yeah, there, there we go, and now it looks a bit better, right? Getting a few kills in a row over here against the P 43, against the Crusader. That's just 9 to 8 over here, but the, the, the HP difference is pretty big. 2000. HP difference that we've seen though, right? That we've seen. The KV-1 can be a one-shot. The mids 108 can be a one-shot. Every 304. We don't know that. Whenever they're outside of the render range, right? This circle over here, the white circle over here, you cannot tell how much HP they have until you actually spot them inside your render range, right? Or they are spotted by someone else uh, inside your render range. But there we go. Go forwards. Go forwards. Save your health and go after the teeth of our 100. Finish him off. Don't let him shut down your Hellcat friend. Maybe catch the Super Hellcat instead. There we go. One shot Super Hellcat. Just need to watch out for that awful shell velocity. Put a shell in. Mm, nope, that one didn't work. A bit more lead. A bit more lead. A bit more lead. Maybe this one. <laughs> that one doesn't hit as well. Going a little to the right over here. Okay, so Gonzalo unfortunately can't save the Hellcat on their team. And now it is a... 2v6. Gonna make it a 2. Never mind. It's a 1v6 now. It's a 1v5. 6 kill, 2,300 damage so far. So, 1v6 turned into a 1v5. This is a fight for a Coral Banner's medal, but as you can see on the enemy team, they have the Sturer Meal on 3 kills already. A very, very dangerous vehicle uh, that can actually one shot Gonzalo if I'm not mistaken. If they fire HE with the big gun, they might be able to one shot Gonzalo over here, but they're going for the cap instead. The Super Hellcat is most likely inside the cap circle, as we did see him drive through it, but now there's two people inside the cap circle. So I guess it is the Shell Cat, as I like to call it, the Super Hellcat, and the Mits 108, the Tier 5. A Japanese heavy tank. Okay, okay, Gonzalo, 30 seconds. Maybe it's time to go forwards. You, know, you do need to reset the cap over here. You know, the Super Hellcat is a one shot like we saw earlier. It is a pretty sneaky vehicle, like I said at the start of this video. It's not going to be easy to spot that vehicle because the Mitsubishi Nate is spotted. Putting one into that Japanese heavy. Did he get spotted here? Did Gonzalo get spotted here? No, but the Mits actually running behind the building and now it's only 22 seconds left on the cap over here. What is Gonzalo going to do? Just push forwards. Hope for the best. Go in. Do the damage. Do need to watch out because the Mits does have a 300 alpha damage gun, which is going to take off. Was that the artillery just firing from the bushes over here? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but like I said, it, it does have two seconds. One second. Oh my goodness, the cap is good. <laughs> there we go. Reset the cap. I, I forgot about the cap for a second there. Luckily, I'm not the one playing, right? Anyway. Anyway, there's the FV right next to it. There's the Super Hellcat. There's a one shot over here. Trying to shut down the Super Hellcat. Unfortunately, getting hit once, but shutting down the Super Hellcat. The Sturm Mill. Watch out. It is the big gun. You can't get hit by the big gun. The FV's going forwards. Can one shot us as well. Luckily, we finish him off with the boom. Oh my goodness, and the Sturm Mill just missing. Miss 100 pushing forwards. It's a one shot, but it's like 300 down for damage. There we go. The Mitz 108 can't actually have any gun depression, almost. Unless it's right at the center of the vehicle. So that is good knowledge by Gonzalo over here. Going towards the side, and that means the two turrets on the front of the Mitz just block it from having the gun depression needed. But yeah, that was a close one. It could, it could have actually gone very, very poorly there if the Mitz put a shell in, if the Sherman put a shell in. But now, up to 9 kills, 3,000 damage, and turning a 1v6 into a 1v2 over here. What is Gonzalo going to do? 7 shells remaining, full health sure meal, full health M41 HMC. Just waiting, surveying the battlefield, trying to wait for the sure meal, right? Because in this situation, you're a one-shot, enemy is definitely not a one-shot. I mean, you will need to pen like 3 HE rounds. 
if you want to finish off the Shura meal, that is like the quickest way to finish off that vehicle. Or, oh, honest, <laughs> Amorak setting on fire. One of those things. But, uh, yeah. Average damage-wise, you will need three HE pens to shut down the Shura meal. And another HE pen to finish off the M41 HMC. They just need to hit your vehicle. Like, this vehicle has no armor at all. Maybe the turret, like the gun mantle, might be able to... Um, absorb an HE round from time to time, or like just decrease the amount of damage you take uh, from the HE. But that hull is like 12 millimeters thick, if I'm not mistaken. If the RT just hits you in the hull, this game is over. And I mean, you already up to 9 kills. You do want the Pulse Medal, and 1v6, you do want the Colobanos Medal. There's a lot at stake over here in this battle for Gonzalo. So. What are they going to do? Still trying to look out for the Sturm meal, but you know the time. Time is running out. 4 minutes, 20 seconds. You can take your time, of course, but... I do like it when people uh, go for the win instead of the draws. Is Gonzalo going to do that, or is he just going to wait for the Sturm meal Northern Star to go forwards? There we go. Gonzalo decides, we've had enough. We have had enough, we're going forwards, we're going for the win. If we lose, then we will lose uh, to trying to go for to everything, right? Go all in, go big or go home, and hopefully we can go big in this round. Let's do this. Pushing forwards, needs to watch out from the right, from the Sturm Mill. There's the Sturm Mill actually going forwards, slowly but surely. Putting one HG run into the side, doing 333 damage, that is a nice one. That is a nice one going through the Sturm Mill. And it's only two HE pens remaining to finish off this tier 7 uh, German tank destroyer. Where will the Sturm Mill come from? This is this is tense. This is tense. If I was the Sturm Mill, I would have just gone forwards here. You know, take a hit and put one in return. That's all I need to do. Um, you can actually bounce, like not bounce, but absorb most of the damage from an HE shell. 45 millimeters is definitely not the best in terms of HE pen. But the Shurmil doesn't really have a lot of armor either. So what is going to happen over here? Is Gonzalo going to get there? There we go, the Shurmil goes forwards and actually doesn't pin the HE and the RT stuns us over here. But only for 6 seconds, so everything is good. That is not good, the Shurmil is on 400 hit points. Now maybe, maybe you should actually find those APCR rounds, you know, we do need two shells anyways. Maybe APCR is better over here. Gonzalo stays with the HE for now, trying maybe to catch, there we go, switching to APCR. Trying to catch the Shermil, there we go, there it is, one into the track, doesn't track unfortunately. But the Shermil is now a watch, I actually didn't get spotted until they fired, which is pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. Was it like a bush in the way? I don't know. I did not see a bush, so I guess the Shermil has a, a dead command or something. Like Can the Shermil get a shell above the, the dead tank? He cannot, and that means that he dies. A nice. And now it is just a 1v1 against the M41 HMC. That can't, you know, one shot Gonzalo with a pen. And like I said, this vehicle is easily penned with a G. What is Gonzalo doing? Don't do this. Don't do this, Gonzalo. Don't do Don't go for the Fadens as well. That is too greedy. That is too greedy. Okay, so the M41 HMC actually has 300 um, HP, if I'm not mistaken. You can actually low roll and then not do enough damage. Just just go for the win. Just go for the win. Don't be greedy and go for the Fadens, Gonzalo. Oh my goodness. What is, go what is going to happen over here? We know if the M41 is over here somewhere. Because they did fire at us a few minutes ago. Where is that M41? Over towards the south, maybe. There it is, towards the west, pushing forwards. What is Gonzalo going to do? Actually, fires another HE round into the ground. And it's, oh my goodness. Oh, I need to pen. Need to pen the last HE round, and you can't get a low roll. The M41 misses. Just take your time. Aim, hit, and there we go. Getting the final kill. My goodness, that is, that is just crazy. You absolute crazy person. Going for the Fadens medal as well in this type of situation. You need to be so cool, so cool to do that, like firing two of your rounds into the ground. I would have just gone for the win, you know, 10 kills, 11 kills, 4,400 damage. I call a Banner's medal. 
that's enough. That's enough for me. But it wasn't enough for Gonzalo. That she went for the Faden's Medal, which is destroying the last enemy vehicle with the last shell in your vehicle. And it worked. So, I mean, <laughs> all's well that ends well, right? So, yes, GG, well played Gonzalo, taking a pretty mediocre tank, in my opinion, and getting an outstanding result in this battle. Um, yeah, 11 kills, 4,462 damage. Just, just owning th th everyone and everything on the enemy team. GG, well played. Uh, but yeah, let's go and check out the post game stats real quick. There we go, Ace Tanker, obviously, for this 1,654 base experience game getting the call of banners medal for standing alone against six enemy vehicles actually and getting the win of Faden's medal like i said for destroying the last enemy vehicle with the last shell in your tank the pascucci's medal for destroying two of the enemy artillery uh the fe304 and the m41 hmc at the end a pool's medal for those 10 kills uh, 11 actually the so 10 or more right uh high caliber for 4,462 damage. Defender medal for getting 100 defense points. You know, when it was down to the last second. Yes, getting the defender as well. Uh, top gun for at least 6 kills. And just just an amazing result overall. All of the shells fired. Like we said, it, it was a Fadian's medal. 24 hit, 22 penned. That's a, an awesome uh, ratio for the Super Hellcat actually. That does have pretty poor penetration for a tier 7 vehicle. Uh, 4,462 damage, 1,282 from a distance of more than 300 meters. Hits received 2, penetrations at 2, which is kind of like what I said, this vehicle has no armor at all. If you expect to bounce something, don't. Even when your hull down, HE rounds will go through your turret as well, so it's not just your hull. This vehicle has no armor whatsoever. So don't expect to uh, to bounce anything with this vehicle. Two vehicles spotted, no assistance actually. Twelve vehicles damaged, eleven are destroyed. Only one vehicle that was damaged wasn't actually destroyed uh, by Gonzalo Ice D over here, which was the P forty three one, obviously. And yes, the one that we tracked over the, towards the south earlier. Uh, Hundred defense points, and like we said, five kilometers traveled, which is just crazy. I mean, didn't really drive that much in your average battle and in this 14 minutes and five second battle got 27,000 credits i mean it is a pretty nice profit it is tier 7 it is actually not a premium vehicle if i'm not mistaken it's like a special reward vehicle that means it doesn't get extra credits um in the battles but yeah awesome result awesome result overall I mean, you can just look at the medals, right? You can just look at those medals and go, okay. This was an awesome battle. Kondobanos, Fadens, Pascucci's, Pools. So many, so many of those special medals. Amazing game. Gonzalo Weisty, GG, well played. Showing you that even the mediocre, kind of like the less powerful vehicle, can have awesome results in the right matchup, in the right position, in the right hands. Um, but yeah, this is it for this video. So let me know, what do you think of the Super Hellcat? Do you have uh, the vehicle? Uh, maybe you're not a veteran enough, I guess, in the War of Tanks. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts, your opinions. And as always, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Tatas, have a good one, people.